Welcome to section 11.6, Simplifying Radicals, and this is video number two. So in this video, we are going to be learning about the product property and the quotient property of square roots. So to start out with, the product property. The product property of square roots is for any non-negative number, real numbers, and, and uh, real numbers A and B the square root of a and b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So that is mumbo jumbo to us. However, we can look at it like this. If we had the square root of 4, that's our a, times 25, our b, we can say, we can do the math, 4 times 25, and that is equal to 100, and the square root of 100 is 10, or we can look at it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 25, square root of 4 times the square root of 25. Square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 25 is 5. So our answer, yet again, is 10. While this top situation seems like it is the most straightforward, we need to be fluent with both types of equation setups because, unfortunately, you see a lot more often that you need to do the bottom equation than the top equation. So let's try this out a little bit. Let's put this into action. We have the number 18 and we have the square root of 18. Well, we can't take the square root of 18. The square root of 18 is like 4.2 or something like that. And we don't want a fraction, remember? Or we don't want a decimal. We want to have the most accurate answer so that means you're going to have a number times a square root or something like that. So if we looked at the number 18, we need to think about what numbers multiply to get 18, and ideally what square numbers multiply to get 18. So if we think our first few square numbers in the cardinal number system, we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. If we looked at 18, 9 can go into 18 two times. So we can essentially break down 18 into the square root of 9 times 2, or the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. We can take the square root of 9, and that gets us 3, and we still have the square root of 2 because there's nothing we can do about that, and so our final answer for the square root of 18 that is the most the more simplified version is 3 square root 2. Let's look at this next one. We have the square root of x to the 4th, y to the 3rd. x to the 4th is not quite as simple as like the number 18. However, we can find some squared variables within x to the 4th. If we think about x to the 4th, we could potentially rewrite it as x squared times x squared. And if we were thinking along those same lines, we can do the same thing with y to the third. We can say it's y squared times y. So if we were going to rewrite this and, es and essentially rewrite it like we did the square root of 18 with saying x squared, or the square root of x squared, square root of x squared, square root, or y squared, and all that jazz, then we can kind of break this all up. So let's start out with we have the square root of x squared times the square root of x squared times the square root of y squared times the square root of y. Now all of this can equal various answers. Square root of x squared is equal to x. Square root of x squared is equal to x. Square root of y squared is equal to y, and we can't take the square root of y. There's no other y that can pair up with it and take it out of the square root. Essentially, I used the example before in class today of everybody is at a dance. We have an odd number of people at a dance. Maybe we have 60 girls and 61 boys, and for every girl there's a boy up until the very last pair. So essentially, we have some good dancing pairs here but then we still have our little wallflower. There's still going to be somebody hanging out on the wall, and they're going to be totally bummed that they don't get to dance. So our answer here, we have x times x times y times the square root of y. So all of that can equal x times x. That is equal to x squared y times the square root of y. Final answer, all said and done. Pretty sweet. That's the product property. 
Let's now learn the quotient property. So product had to deal with multiplication. Quotient has to deal with division. There's two different ways we can look at this. The quotient property of square roots for any non or for any real numbers a and b where a is greater than 0 because we can't have a negative number. We also don't, don't want a to be 0 because if a is 0 then everything's 0. And for b where it doesn't equal or it's greater than 0. So essentially b can't equal 0 because we can't divide by 0. The square root of a divided by b is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So again, mumbo jumbo, we have the square root of 36 divided by 4, which we can turn into 36 divided by 4 is 9, so the square root of 9, and we can take that and that square root and we get 3. Well, we can also look at the square root of 36 divided by 4. We can actually break that up and say the square root of 36 divided by the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 36 is 6, the square root of 4 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Awesome. Let's put this into use. Let's put it into action. We have square root of 5 divided by 9. First things first, we can't take the square root of 5 divided by 9. However, we can look at this and say, well, I could take the square root of 5 and the square root of 9. And while the square root of 5 is going to stay there, because square, 5 is not a squared number, 9 becomes 3. So we have the square root of 5 over 3. Can handle that. That's kind of cool. Let's look at this next one. Square root of a to the fifth divided by 81a. Let's first do our quotient property and say the square root of a to the fifth over the square root of 81a. Square root of a to the fifth, we kind of just did that with x's and we would say a to the a squared times a squared times a all under a square root sign, that is the same thing. So we end up with a coming out of there, another a coming out of there, and an a left inside, so that equals this, whoops. So that equals a squared square root a. So on the top, we have a squared square root a. On the bottom, however, square root of 81, we can do that, that's 9, and the square root of a is on the bottom, left behind, because there's no pair for that A. However, what's cool is I can see right here, vertically, we have a square root of A on the top and the square root of A on the bottom. That's essentially like multiplying by 1. Might as well get rid of it. We can simplify it and get take that away. So we end up with simply A squared divided by 9 for our final answer. Kind of neat. So we've learned two properties, and now putting them into action is the hard part. We're going to end up having situations that are not always cut and dry, and to use the quotient and the product property fluently within one problem can be really, really helpful. So we have the square root of 80 divided by 25. I like 25 being on the bottom. If I took the square root of 25, I get 5. So let's use the quotient property to start this out. We have the square root of 80 divided by the square root of 25. So we have still on the top square root of 80. We already said the square root of 25 is 5. So now we just have to deal with the top part. 80. If I think of all the factors of 80 that are perfect squares, I can think of the number 4 and then the number 20. 4 times 20 gets me 80. As well, I can think of 20 being 5 times 4. So all of these factors, especially these ones that are perfect squares, we can put inside of our per, uh, inside of our square root symbol. So the square root of 80, we can rewrite as 4 times 4 times 5 over the square uh, over 5. So 4 times 4 square root of that is 2 times 2. So 2 times 2, if we take that out, we get 2 times 2 is 4. Whoops. 2 times 2 is 4, and then we still have the square root of 5, and that is all over our original square root of 25, which was 5. So there's one problem. Let's try one more, and then hopefully you can start in on your homework. We have the square root of 4 x to the fifth divided by 9. Looking at this, again, we're in that situation where we have a fraction. Let's 
and a fraction is just a gigantic division sign. So we have 4x to the 5th over the square root of 9. So the square root of 4x to the 5th over the square root of 9. Let's do a little bit math here. And I'm actually going to break this top part up a little bit more because it helps me see everything. If you notice, I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with that square root of a to the 5th. And I turned that x squared, x squared, x squared, that x to the fifth into x squared, x squared, x. Kind of cool. Square root of 4, we can do that. Square root of 4 gets us a 2. Square root of 9 gets us a 3. So at the top, we have a 2. On the bottom, we have a 3. And then we need to pay attention to this x squared, x squared, x situation. Doing that, I have 2 over 3, and now let's deal with these x's. We have x squared, which becomes x, another x squared, which becomes x. So we have two x's, that means we have an x squared on the outside of that square root, and we're leaving behind one x that just gets to stand on the wall and not dance with everybody else. So I hope these problems helped you understand what was happening in, um, for the second half of this chapter, 11.6. Do the homework, see how it goes, and if you have any questions, as always, please ask. Thank you so much. Bye.